Alabama. Alabama. Gosh, quarterback controversy. First round draft picks, gone. Three of them. Linebacker, gone. Safeties, gone. Thank God. Gosh. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, dude. If you're a Bama fan, I'm sure you're tired of seeing D'Amico, DeMarco Hellams and even Jordan Battle, you know, miss some assignments too. Mostly, the, the biggest loss there in terms of upgrading addition by subtraction is Pete Golding. And we'll talk about the defense later, but I'm sure Bama fans everywhere are excited about the new possibilities. You know, the old school, Kevin Steele, you know, um, getting back to the Bama way, you know. Yeah, and look, uh, I could sit here and go in depth about who's going to be starting quarterback. Is it going to be Jalen Monroe? Is it going to be Tyler Buckner? Ty Simpson is still in wrong, longer and going to get some playing time at some point this season. Let's not bore you with that, though. Let's just say there's quarterback controversy. They don't know uh, who it is, and I don't know if they like what they got, which is crazy to say for Alabama at this point. Um, Zuri Nick Saban is normally not reactive about those things. Uh, but you do get some uh, – key returners on the offensive side of the ball being the entire offensive line. It is an e- – well, not the entire offensive line. You lose Tyler Steen, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Javion Cohen Javion transferred to Miami. Cohen. No, it does not matter. This offensive line is ridiculous, right? If, so if there was a year to have, like, a mediocre quarterback in there that maybe is struggling a little bit, this offensive line is going to do all it can to to really help out. And uh, Jason McClellan, I think, is going to benefit from that a lot. Let's see you. Well, I think um, I think the style of everyone's talking about the style of 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 offense is going to change for this Bama team, and they're going to start playing a little bit more complimentary football, which it, you've seen like in most of their national championships they have, with the exception of, well, I guess even you throw in Mac Jones there, I don't think Mac Jones is an exceptional talent, you know, at quarterback in terms of the game breaker, you know, can take over a game like a Bryce Young, like Tua, like Jalen Hurts, even at times. Um, a lot of those guys they won with were Jacob Coker, you know, with AJ McCarron and, and Greg McRoy. I wouldn't call them game managers because I think that's, you know, that, that term I don't think is really the right term. But I, I think like, like in terms of playing comp or football, like I think that's it's very impactful. I think with the style of offensive line they have, with the deep running back room they have, and even like the wide receivers, they're they're not very. To be honest, the best things that they bring to the table are it's honestly run blocking. Um, out on the edge there. I don't love, you know, the pass catchers in that room. Uh, they got a couple tight ends that I know they'll like to use, which again helps you with with running the football. Um, I don't think it matters who starts game one because I don't. I mean, it's probably gonna be Jalen Milrow, but who knows who plays in week two? Um, I don't think either of them are super special, anyways. So like, I don't think it's it really matters. I think you mentioned the Seagulls. I'm actually high on this family team. I think I'm gonna. I would take the over, but I'm. I think. The better bet is honestly just take them to win the national championship because I think if they survive that schedule going 11 and one, right, I think they're going to be well on their way to to winning, you know, you know, what is it, 19 now, 19 championships for them. Um, I think <clears throat> worst case scenario, if I'm wrong, right, and if you after Tennessee, let's say you lose after week eight, you lose to Texas and at Texas A&M and then you lose to t- Tennessee again. Say so you have three losses, like in that in that first round, everything goes wrong. <clears throat> I think you're going to see Dylan Long in room, right in week ten against LSU. I think you might as well throw him out there. Um, I think that's the only real way we see him is if they do lose a bunch of games, which obviously I know Bama fans want to see him. But if you're seeing him in that case, I mean, obviously you're not going to be upset. You're not going to be happy at all. Like we said, it's a tough schedule. I mean, there's reason why it's a top ten you know schedule in the country. Texas is not easy. I'm high on Texas. I'm really high on Texas. I think. In week two, is Bama going to be the same team that they are in week 10 when they play LSU? I don't think so at all, which is why I don't want to take the over because I think, you know, 10 and two in an SEC champ, an SEC West champ with lost Texas still gets them into the, the playoffs and still gets them um, like everything they need to do, which is why I'm hesitant to, to take the over because it doesn't give them much margin of error. With that, it's like your, your LSU and Florida State's like I, taking the over is hard because you have those hard out of comes games. But losing that in week two or week one with LSU and Florida State, it does not ruin all of your goals. You still have all your goals. You're still not really – you're kind of playing with, with on thin ice, but you still have a little bit of margin of error there for that if you lose the right game, right? Yeah, I think uh, the over-under win total at 10.5, I'm going to push that. I'm not going to take over, not going to take under. I wouldn't even lean either direction uh, just because I think – I mean, the schedule's tough, right? I mean, it always is, and defensively you lose – the best defensive player in the country, 
and you lose the best offense player in the country at the same time. So how do you like? Sometimes it's tough to recover in that way. But defensively, they have Jaheim Otis still, who's going to be a true sophomore monster, right? Tim Smith, I think, is pretty solid over there, like playing D tackle. Dallas Turner's obviously really good. Um, he'll likely be a first round draft pick. And then actually in the secondary, there's a chance I think this team gets better in the secondary. Um, for sure. Caleb Downs, Caleb Downs is a true freshman, but he is that guy. Yeah. So uh, he is that guy. Cooley McKinstry, obviously, as you have on the screen, fantastic player um, in the secondary there. Malachi Moore, he's had a lot of experience, so he's fine. Terry and Arnold at times was not great last year, but maybe another year, right? Um, he'll be able to take a step forward. So that'd be nice to see a step from him for sure. So I, I don't know. I mean, this team's deep. It has some talents in places that you need talents. Just uh, I think quarterback and receiver are really just the, the biggest questions here. Yeah, I, the thing is, I do think why I do am so high on this team is because of the the physical brand of football they're going to play on offense and defense. You know, the reason why I'm so high on it is because, first of all, I love that, right, in college football, when you have the athletes to do it, and you have the depth. I think this team, like going to the SEC and all these other conferences, is depth after the transfer portal era is so hard to come by. And, and to be honest, is with a team that doesn't have its stars like Bryce Young or Will Anderson, like I think you could pick four or five, I could four or five players on this team. Nobody, like nobody's irreplaceable. You know, they have depth everywhere. Nobody's like this linchpin that's like, oh, like if he goes down, everyone's screwed. I mean, obviously you have guys you hope step up and are elite, like Jaheim Otis, like you talked about, Dallas Turner, right? Hopefully you got, you know, Deontay Lawson and, and the, the Georgia transfer there, like on defense, you'd want a wide receiver to step up. But I think if injuries happen, like I I still think this team can absolutely overcome them, which is why I think I'm so high on them to take a future bet because I think I'm looking at like worst case scenario in terms of injury deck or depth or luck. I don't really see it really hurting them too much. And so that's why I, I think this team is awesome. The secondary you talked about, I think they got like eight, nine guys that I, I think I'm pretty high on. All right, they got like three corners, you get three nickels, you know, four safeties, like all, all guys that like you feel really darn good about. Former high recruits, they brought in some interesting transfers. Um, I would have loved to see them go out and get a guy like um Dominic Lovett, right? And like or like a stud wide receiver or one of the one of the Kent State guys. I think one of those guys would have been really, really nice to help out this offense. Um and so we'll see what the wide receiver room is. Obviously, it's obviously talented, it's, it's still deep. Like you got seven, eight guys that that are all going to be getting, they're all going to be playing. It's just about like consistency, and then who can rise to the top and be that alpha in that room. And it's third and seven, or it's or it's, it's even first and ten, and you throw a slant pass, and he goes for eighty yards, like they've had in the past with with some of these guys. But so so we'll see. Um, Roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs>